I am the resurrection and the life, saith the Lord. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet he shall live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though this body be destroyed, Yet shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not as a stranger. For none of us liveth to himself, and no man dieth to himself. For if we live, we live unto the Lord, and if we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live, therefore, or die, we are the Lord. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so saith the Spirit, for they rest from their labor. A time to seek and a time to lose, a time to keep 
and a time to throw away, a time to fear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak. The word of the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Remaining seated, let us read together Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy God and my Sabbath. So that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. 
No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to the begins with a quote. Do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. This quote has hung in my parents' house for years and I thought particularly relevant as remember my father who created his own destiny and blazed his own trail throughout his life. His trail began growing up in Little Neck, New York, where among other childhood activities, he began his love of baseball by watching the Brooklyn Dodgers at Ebbets Field. After graduating high school, he worked his way through college, starting at Nicholas Junior College in Massachusetts, and ultimately receiving his undergraduate degree from Texas Christian University. Despite his family's strong recommendation to return to New York, he decided to pursue an advanced degree at TCU. Without that strong determination and decision, our family wouldn't be here today. The next chapter came in what could be a scene from one of his favorite Hallmark movies. The scene opens with Dad overseeing the first computer center using punch cards at TCU, where he met the love of his life. They were soon married and began a life together. Dan found, Dad found work in this town called State College, and together they moved here without knowing anyone. Little did they know at the time, another fellow from Brooklyn that loved football started his coaching career in State College the same year. What started as a new job in a new town quickly led to an amazing research assignment with the U.S. Army and adventure in Germany, where the young couple took advantage of their, th their time there and explored numerous European countries. We've heard about their ride through the salt mines more times than I can count. <laughs> I'd like to hear that story sometime. <laughs> after returning from Germany, Dad and Mom settled back in State College. Soon after I was born, this is Bevan, they decided to move to a house outside of town in Belfont, a home we fondly refer to as the Pond House. As kids, we had many adventures in the forest and canoeing or fishing in the pond surrounding the house. Every season at the Pond House, had its unique moments. During the summer, we had a kid's garden and large garden where we would plant lots of fruits and vegetables that got bigger. Wintertime brought bobsledding down the hill and ice skating on the pond once it froze over. One infamous Christmas, after we were much older, we decided to cut down our own very tall tree from the garden to take advantage of the high ceiling that was the year that we all learned the importance of measuring twice and cutting <laughs> once. Dad's work created many lifelong friendships that created an extended family in State College. On fall Saturdays often, we would be going 
the Penn State football games, where at a young age we were indoctrinated into the football tailgating tradition when Dad would often make a special breakfast flambe. We also took lots of trips to New York, Florida, and Texas to spend summer vacation or holidays with family. We had many, many adventures as a family, including a regular trip to Maine in the summer where we learned about clamming, lobstering, blueberries, and eating seafood from clam bakes on the beach. Dad volunteered for many of our extracurricular events, including coaching Little League Baseball, which is when we also developed our own batting average statistics computer program for the team. Imagine that. He served as our chauffeur, shuttling us to school events, sports, or scouting events all around Pennsylvania, New York, and DC. In 1987, Dad launched his own company, The Last Resource Incorporated, built on his belief that each of us is our own last resource to achieve anything in life. In addition to completing numerous transportation studies for Federal Highway Administration that helped to make roads safer, with better lighting and improved sign legibility, it also provided an opportunity for his family to participate including Mom as the Chief Financial Officer, and Jeff and I providing IT and research support. There were numerous studies where we would help move signs to test headlight angles and material reflectiveness on stop signs or traffic signals. After retiring, Dad got to spend a lot more of his time doing what he enjoyed most, listening to music, photography, playing golf, attending sporting events, and most importantly, going on more adventures with the love of his life. Hilton Head was an annual destination at first and then turned into a place that they would go multiple times a year, as well as regular trips to Williamsburg and exploring vineyards throughout Virginia. Dad was always looking for good wine, food, and memories. Jeff and I put down roots in Washington, D.C., which was a familiar area since Dad lived there on a work assignment when we were growing up. Dad and Mom would come and visit occasionally, oftentimes using the opportunity to meet up with longtime friends that were still in the area. We would come up to State College for football weekends and holidays when we, uh, when we would keep many of our childhood traditions alive. Eventually, Jeff and I found our soulmates, Ellen and Stephanie. Dad loved his new daughters-in-law and watching both of us start our own trails together with them. Dad continued his love of sports and enjoyed watching and analyzing more of the local sports teams like the Spikes and the Penn State hockey team which we would hear about frequently, who was getting on base or getting shots on goal. I can attest to that one. I, I heard those statistics at a hockey game one time. <laughs> Dad always supported, cared for, and deeply loved his family, including our canine companions. His dog, Austin, will miss the belly rubs and extra treats after mealtime. Dad was most excited, though, to be promoted to Papa. When Isabel, Sophie, Patrick, and Emily came into his life. He had a unique relationship with each of his grandchildren. It was really fun to watch them, to watch them together. He introduced his grandchildren to playing games, sporting events, music, and he really enjoyed reading books to them. Trips to Washington, D.C. became more frequent, where he could spend time with his grandchildren, and often, as part of a road trip, he would be taken with mom, either at home or on their road trips. One game was always around skip bow, which he loved to play with mom on a weekday, or if on a, a weekly, if not daily, basis. The last year held many great memories. 
including celebrating Mom's 80th birthday at the house with many longtime friends, hosting Isabel and Sophie at Nana and Papa camp during the summer, a visit to Williamsburg with Jeff, Ellen, Patrick, and Emily, another trip to Hilton Head and walk on the beach, his 85th birthday celebration with the family in DC, taking Isabel and Sophie to a Penn State women's hockey game, going to a Washington Capitals hockey game over Thanksgiving, celebrating Christmas with the usual traditions and games, watching TCU in the college football championship, a last fun-filled weekend with his sons and grandchildren, playing games, eating, eating Chinese food, and enjoying Elmo birthday cake, and a last drive home to State College with mom, enjoying the wonderful weather and countryside. Do not follow where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. We love you, Dad, and thank you for creating your own unique trail, a memorable one for us all to appreciate and learn from. Thank you, Beth. In our first lesson, we heard from the book of Ecclesiastes, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. It includes the words, a time to be born and a time to die. Well, we all know that one day we will die. Doug's death was so sudden and unexpected. I think it makes it much harder for those who were left behind. I've often heard it said, I've said it myself, that a fast death is better for the individual than a long, slow decline, but so much harder on the family. I think Ecclesiastes and our gospel today helps us keep all of that in perspective. Judging from what Bevan wrote and I just read from my many conversations with Linda and from observing this family, I think I can say that Doug had a good life, a good life. And he has a great family. I got to know Doug here at St. Andrews as a parishioner. He was an usher and he was our, our head usher for a time. So I interacted with him around schedules and things like that. I knew Doug to have a very strong sense of morality, a very strong sense of what is right and what is wrong. I knew him to be very faithful. He and Linda were in church, if they were in town, with their busy travel schedules, but they were in church pretty much every Sunday. And I learned after his death from Linda just how deep Doug's faith was. I mean, a very deep faith. I believe, and it would come as no surprise to you, that uh, I believe that a strong faith can carry us through all the various seasons of life, the ups and the downs. 
It is particularly an asset in difficult times. And it helps when one is making one's own way through life. Jesus spoke about where he was going. He talked about going ahead of his disciples and coming to bring them to himself. And he assured them that they, that they knew the way to the place where he was going and where they eventually would be as well. And it was Thomas who spoke up and said, Lord, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Thomas was very logical. Jesus responded to this by saying, I am the way. And in fact, in that English translation, we miss something. It's actually quite an emphatic response. More like, I, I am the way and the truth and the life. Jesus is the way. Having faith to follow where Jesus as our Lord leads us, even when we cannot see the road, and we do not know which way it will take us in our lives, that is really the heart of a faithful life being willing to walk in faith and trust that Jesus will lead you home. God doesn't give us a road map. We don't get to know when we will arrive at our destination. We're asked simply to follow in faith, to trust, trusting the one who has gone ahead The irony is that if we trust and believe that Jesus is the way to eternal life, we find ourselves free. Free from the fears and anxieties that may hold us back. Free from the inability to act or decide. Free from not wanting to take a risk. That kind of freedom in faith leads to a very full life. In short, faith in Christ Jesus as Lord makes one free to live the life that God has given, to live it fully. Doug lived his 85 years. He built a business. He built a loving family. He was an active member of his church and his community. He enjoyed his life. Now, we gather, we give thanks to God for the blessings that we all enjoy as a result of his life. And we commend Doug to his Lord whom he has followed in his life, his Lord who has gone before and has now taken him home unto himself so that where Jesus is, Doug is also. His Lord who created him and called him to follow. Don't follow, not knowing the road ahead, but knowing the way. Amen. Send as you are able. In the assurance of eternal life given that baptism let us proclaim our faith and said.
Well, first, let me say welcome to St. Andrews. I'm on behalf of Doug's family to say thank you for being here today. Immediately after the service, we will have a reception. It is in our Canterbury Hall. If you don't know where that is, and I know that there are people here who do, find one and follow them. Uh, it's actually way over on the other side of the building. If you uh, go down this hallway, if you go to the back of the church and down the hallway, you see a yellow stripe on the wall. If you follow that, it will get you to Canterbury Hall. Um, right now, uh, we are going to celebrate Holy Communion, and I want to make sure that everyone understood that all baptized Christians, regardless of your denomination or church that you are uh, a member of, you are welcome and indeed invited to receive communion with us here today. Uh, we will be receiving in one kind only, uh, bread only today, which is full communion, either uh, bread or wine is full communion. Uh, we will, I will uh, give communion to the choir first, uh, but then uh, the congregation will uh, come forward. Two lines right at the center aisle. I'll stand about here and sort of distribute uh, the bread. Once you receive, then if you would sort of keep going around the outside uh, aisles back, uh, back to your pew, uh, that would be great. Um, I also wanted to mention that at the very end of uh, this service today, after communion, we will be uh, placing those ashes into the columbarium. You can't see it from back there, but up here there is a columbarium uh, for the repose of ashes. Uh, so when, when we start to move during the last hymn, uh, I'm inviting the family to join us as we walk over there. But unfortunately, there isn't enough room for everybody. So if you all would kind of stay where you are and allow the family to gather, it's a brief little ceremony of placing the ashes into the columbarium. And we'll dismiss from there and, uh, as I said, head straight over for the reception. Did you all have any other, anything else to mention? Okay. Well, again, I do appreciate you all being here. Offer to God the sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
A couple of details I neglected to mention about communion. If you require gluten-free bread, we do have gluten-free options, just let you know when you come forward. And also, uh, if you are not receiving communion today, you are still invited to come forward to receive a blessing and just signify that to me by crossing your arms in front of your chest like this, and I'll know that you are there to receive blessing. Uh, well, let us continue our worship now with the great thanksgiving. Uh, please stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And with my spirit. Lift up your hearts. Yes, Lord, Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rose victorious from the dead and doth comfort us with the blessed hope of everlasting life. For to thy faithful people, O Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when our mortal body doth lie in death, there he is prepared for us a dwelling place, eternal, in the heavens. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, O Son and the Lord. All glory be to the Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for that thou, of thy tender mercy, didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before this thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and that thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. 
And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, O Lord, our God, thy will be done, thy will be done, thy will be done, on earth as it is Give us the day of our daily bread, and we forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the mind is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us be in peace. Alleluia. gifts of God for the people of God.
Let us pray the post-communion prayer together. Almighty God, we thank Thee that in Thy great love Thou hast fed us with the spiritual food and drink of the body and blood of Thy Son, Jesus Christ, and hast given unto us a foretaste of Thy heavenly banquet. Grant that this sacrament may be unto us a comfort and the pledge of our inheritance in that kingdom where there is no death, neither sorrow nor crime, but the fullness of joy of all of thy saints, through Jesus Christ our Savior. Sheep 
through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.